Good morning. Uh, my name is Gang He. It's a great pleasure for me to be here to share some of my thoughts on China's energy uh, environment. I'm glad I'm the last speaker of the uh, morning panel because this set up a, a perfect stage for me to bring up the uh, topic of energy and uh, environment. Tomorrow, uh, uh, we will have uh, more speakers to share uh, their view on specific topics, but uh, I, I'm, I hope my uh, talk will give you a, a big picture about uh, China's uh, energy and environment. Um, from my take, I have uh, uh, two keywords about China really uh, in, in this uh, morning discussion. Diverse, uh, complicated. Uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, think about, you don't need to tell me, think about the last piece of the China news you read. Uh, is it bad news or good news? Think about that. Uh, you, you probably, it's, if you start on China, if you hear about China, you probably uh, feel uh, confused sometimes about uh, the pictures. So this is a picture uh, took in uh, 2000. Uh, 13 about the uh, uh, right uh, before the, uh, the two conferences, two major conferences in, in, in Beijing, and uh, people talk about the Chinese dream, and the Chinese dream of the blue sky is in the screen. So that's a very, very dramatic uh, image in, in this to show the air pollution in China and how that uh, invaded in the, in, the, in the big picture. Um, and that uh, shows you how uh, how they and the picture collected with the air pollution in in, uh, in Beijing. I use the data from US, U.S. Embassy in Beijing. They release uh, hourly data, and I combined that with uh, uh, daily average. You can see at some point it uh, exceeded 500 uh, micrograms per cubic meter, and the level recommended by the WHO is at uh, uh, 25. So you can see how, how, how bad that is. And most of the days, it exceeds that level. Uh, but sometimes you, you hear image, you see images like this. Uh, this is a picture took in Zhangbei, uh, which is one of the largest wind farms. China with a 10 gigawatt scale of wind. And you, you probably hear the news about uh, uh, China will uh, exceed the US to be the uh, biggest investment in clean energy. And all, all that different kind of, or who will win the clean energy competition, those news. So my talk today is really to think about the three questions. The first question is, to, to address those uh, mixed pictures. The first is why China has such severe energy and environment challenges. So why? And the second question is, what are the major uh, challenges? And the, the, the third question is maybe to hopefully to give you some optimism about how we to address those, questions, those challenges. So uh, this morning section also gives me uh, a sense of the the, the keyword that the change, and uh, in English many people put that as a transition. Um, this transition, uh, there are many aspects: political, economy, social, uh, education, all aspects of the the, the Chinese. Uh, uh, people's life and the, the, the society. So I put myself by the example. I was born in rural China in Hunan province, a uh, very uh, locked area and a uh, uh, very remote area, poor. Uh, my, my parents are uh, peasants, so the only way for me to get out of the village is either by joining the army or go to uh, the city work as a immigrant worker or go to the university. Um, so I, I, I had the chance to uh, choose the solo way and now I'm here to uh, 
get my advanced degree in the energy environment. So I personally observed the whole the change from different levels of the society and I also benefit from this social change. So in order to understand the, uh, this transition, you can see here, this is the really put the background uh, that such a uh, great transition. Um, no, I don't need to mention those uh, numbers or, or those, uh, sometimes uh, it might true a lot, but uh, here, let's say, four measure social uh, economic transition. Um, I think uh, one thing is the industrialization. Um, think about those many in China goods. Uh, uh, you probably hear a book that uh, uh, a day without China, a day without many in China. So that, that's a very, very interesting book. Um, put that, those numbers, let's say, 80% um, of uh, the steel production and uh, 75 of the glasses. And if you, this needs can keep going on and on, those are really uh, has big uh, implications. Why I mentioned it, it has big implications for China's energy and uh, energy consumption and environmental impact. Um, and most of the goods are export, exported to other parts of the world. And if you think about the, uh, the emission, 23% of the emission is come from the uh, products exported to other parts of the world. And the second uh, transition is the urbanization. Uh, by 20, 11 or, or 2012, uh, depends what number you use, half of the population now lives in cities in China. About the same pace uh, world average. So what does that really mean? Um, let's say over the 30 years, China moved about 300 million people from rural area to urban area, and one of them. Uh, so 300 million is the total population is the, of the U.S. So which means China moved the U.S. size population. So think about the scale. And in the coming decades, by 2050, China will move another U.S. size population to the urban area. So the energy implication for that is people living in the urban area usually consumes three times more energy than people living in rural area. That might be a bad news. But the good news is that once people move to the open area, then they release the pressure in rural area to the environment. Because you can have more concentrated uh, service and have less impact uh, to, to the ecosystem. So, and Tom also mentioned the uh, modernization uh, of the society. So that's the change of the lifestyle. Uh, people need a better service. People need a, uh, transit, what, transportation, what that. So that's really have a big impact on the growing uh, demand of the uh, middle class. Um, Another driver is the population. Uh, population. Uh, I want to share a, a, a maths, a simple maths that uh, once uh, uh, shared by uh, the uh, premier Wen Jiabao, uh, the previous premier. Um, he mentioned that if you do a quick math with the 1.3 million people, uh, if you have a small problem for each individual, and if you sum them up, it, it creates a huge problem. If you have big apple, you divide it by uh, 1.3 billion, it only got a slice, a small slice. So that's really uh, matters in when we think about the, the, the overall, uh, 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 the energy and the environment. Uh, uh, it's also a, a very good uh, uh, way to think about it. And one uh, implication 
So what, why this matters is uh, many uh, discussions, if you talk about the overall or you talk about per capita. So the left chart, you can see this when we talk about the uh, uh, global responsibility of uh, uh, carbon uh, emission. Um, the left chart is the, the share of the overall emission. Uh, you can see China now it passed the U.S. to be the number one carbon emitter. But if you think about the per capita, uh, U.S. is still about 2.5 times more uh, on the per capita level. Um, so if this can apply on many situations, um, energy consumption, GDP, and uh, carbon emission, uh, this is also uh, what China really uh, to think about its uh, own situation is there is so diverse both inside China and between different regions uh, on its emission, on its uh, environmental impact. Um, another background is to see uh, if, we, if we want to understand the China's uh, energy and or environment challenge, it has to be put in the background of uh, uh, economy, energy, environment, and uh, this, those three aspects are, are very intact, interacted. And this, we, without understanding uh, one of those, we cannot uh, give the uh, answers to uh, the energy or environment challenges. Mm. E economy aspect for that is uh, it's a export oriented and very energy intensive economy. Uh, I mentioned that the made in China in industry, and uh, you can uh, I'll just show uh, the uh, numbers that uh, <coughs> the economy is highly dependent on the uh, industry. And industry, if you think about the electricity, industry uh, is very different than in the States. Industry share of uh, electricity consumption is about 70% of China's electricity industry. And for that's driven by the uh, exported uh, oriented economy and the resource and energy intensive uh, economy. Uh, for energy, uh, they re one inconvenient truth for China is it's a co-dominated energy uh, mix. Uh, about 70% of China's primary energy is from coal. And this number is coming down, but still this uh, it, it's, it's very dramatic. 80% uh, about the electricity is from coal. And we all know coal uh, is a, a uh, a dirty energy source uh, for the uh, pollution about the uh, carbon emission uh, and other pollutants like uh, sulfur, uh, nitrogen dioxide, all that. And uh, that's the main source of uh, China's uh, air pollution in cities. And there is a growing source of the transportation for the uh, coal burning sources are, are still quite uh, important. And if you think about the energy and the scale, uh, China consumes half of the global uh, coal consumption. Uh, that's uh, very, very uh, dramatic and it's a very, it, it's a big problem for China and the world, uh, both from uh, environmental protection side and from uh, climate change climate change uh, perspective. And here is where the coal uh, go. Uh, you can see most of it goes to uh, uh, power generation and it goes to uh, industry. Uh, uh, coal, uh, power generation consumes about uh, uh, half of uh, China's coal and the other half uh, goes to industry and some, some consumed by the residential use but uh, that's how you, you picture the, the energy pro the problem. And I mentioned that the industry dominated the energy use, uh, but the transportation sector uh, 
and the building sector are catching up. And I put that uh, in background is how you compare that to the United States. You can see China is heavily dominated by industry by the, uh, in the States. Uh, it's shared by industry, transportation, um, and the building about uh, each share about one third. Um, I mentioned that uh, urbanization has a big uh, implication of the uh, energy consumption and uh, environmental uh, challenges. So what, what really uh, happens uh, over the, uh, uh, the environment, what the second question I uh, raised in, at the very beginning, what really happens uh, in the uh, energy and environment. So the key message here is Today's environment is a concentration of uh, the 30 years of uh, development. And that put in the background the how severe the situation and how challenged to solve the problem. Uh, uh, either you, you think about it from air pollution or water pollution or solid waste challenge in the cities. And not just the uh, in those specific area, it's a ecosystem-wide uh, environmental degradation. Uh, there are many discussions on that. If it's just a, a area or uh, a, a specific question, uh, then it makes it easier to address. But if it's a ecosystem-wide, the the challenge is even uh, bigger. Uh, Environmental problem uh, is, a, uh, is growing as a source of uh, social uh, instability. Um, uh, Rosalind mentioned that there's a rank in the uh, decision making, uh, for example, social stability, uh, national security. So once environmental problem getting uh, to the uh, source of social instability, then it has good news and bad news. Good news is that the party or the government will address it as a very important uh, issue. And the bad part of that is it's, it's going uh, growing. And it can happen in one place and it, it can happen in other places. So the current situation, as uh, I mentioned, that in because the government invests so much in uh, some area, uh, in, in those uh, uh, many uh, uh, areas. So it, it gets some improvement, but overall degra degradation uh, still uh, the, on the train. Um, this, the situation remains great, grave, which shows the, the big uh, trend. I have many uh, uh, slides to show in each of these topics, like air, water, solid waste, or ecosystem. So uh, you can check that uh, after uh, our uh, seminar. But uh, here is the, some of the measure uh, trends. And uh, the pressure, uh, which means that they unhappy about the growing middle class. And that pressure is keep pushing. And uh, how the response to this pressure gives some of the optimism, I think, in the uh, discussion. So I will uh, skip this. So I mentioned that there are always uh, bad news or good news, and a lot of all bad news is the, uh, let's say, the, the strong uh, pollution control. If you, uh, last uh, uh, this year, only this year, uh, uh, China releases an air uh, action plan for air pollution control. And you can see how uh, China invent, invests heavily on those uh, frontier, and they expanding natural reserves uh, and building more uh, eco uh, low carbon eco city. Uh, I'm uh, happy that I'm working with uh, LBL on some of those initiatives, and the clean energy, and solar, wind, and nuclear, and other. Uh, here is give you a sense of how. China depend on its uh, clean energy. Uh, China put a very aggressive targets on 
its hydro, wind, and uh, solar, uh, and the nuclear development. Because uh, I put this the uh, the spot line, that's the, the trajectory channel to achieve its uh, target, and the solid line. Uh, you can see that China's exceed measure of this uh, measure its target. So that's very impressive and very important uh, for us to understand. And its investment in the high speed rail. And um, I took. Uh, some uh, the longest high speed rail from Guangzhou to uh, Beijing uh, uh, last year, and uh, I, I feel it's very comfortable, and uh, and uh, I can do uh, my work on, on the train, and it's very very on time. So uh, if you go to China, I definitely recommend it. For um, so uh, those are the uh, examples that you can look into do details. But I, I want to give you some uh, uh, new or key messages. Uh, one is the uh, from a mandate uh, command and control approach in regulating its environment to a more market-oriented approaches. Uh, China is actually setting up a carbon trade uh, pilots in uh, five provinces, eight cities, and all those are now. Uh, Hubei is the last one to re re release its plan, but now those are all under uh, development, and you can see they have a price for carbon in those different uh, uh, region markets. And if China can set up a, to start from a region market to have a a, a national market for its, uh, uh, for uh, carbon price, that will have big impact on how China will use its energy and to regulate its environment. And this, I think, provides a, um, a positive or optimism in when we think about the energy and the uh, and environment uh, problem. Some other aspects like uh, technology innovation, uh, the uh, more transparent uh, information and uh, uh, the freedom of information, and civic society and the uh, uh, public uh, participation, I think, uh, Great now we are share that more in tomorrow's section. And international cooperation, as Tom mentioned, that uh, US China has engaged so many uh, initiatives on energy and uh, climate. Here in California, I also work with Asia Society on the how California and China can work together on addressing those um, uh, challenges. So here are they uh, some conclusion, the take home messages is uh, China is under its greatest uh, economic trans transition and uh, the opportunities lie with challenges. Uh, when China think about the, its crisis, but it's also its wage, the crisis also shows the opportunity. So that has a, uh, has a good message for the students who want to work in the energy and environment area because uh, China has such a uh, crisis in uh, energy and environment. It also provided the opportunity for the students to address the most pressing environment challenges. Uh, if we can solve China's problem, uh, we can solve the world problem. Uh, population really matters. Uh, uh, the optimism lies in the public involvement and the civic society, uh, their concern about uh, their uh, environment. And uh, the optimism is also lies China, the transition from a command control economy to a more market-oriented uh, governance. Uh, those, I think, uh, are uh, for us to think about uh, the, the opportunity and the challenge and to, I think, the best uh, strategy for the world is really to work with China and to engage China uh, to, uh, in, in this, uh, uh, in, in this uh, transition is to, for a better world because uh, we cannot achieve sustainable development without China's sustainable development. Uh, thank you.